Have you been born again? Do you know what that is? Yeah, when, when, when you've given yourself to Jesus Christ and you're living for Him, and it, and it rebirths you as His child. Yeah. Have you been born again? I believe so. I don't believe in the Bible, but I believe in God. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> so you've admitted you're a lying thief? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> do you still think you're a good person? <laughs> I do. I still think I do. Do you ever think about the afterlife? Yes, of course. Are you afraid of death? Not as I get older. I don't believe there's an afterlife. I believe once we pass away, it's just uh, we're left with darkness. Rob, where do you get your information from? Uh, I don't go research nothing. It's just something I believe in strongly, just by nature. Just so you just made it up? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. This is your life we're talking about. What say you're wrong? If I'm wrong, then I'd like to see facts. I'd like to see something that proves the different, you know, and, and I'm not against that. Do you ever pray? Oh, of course. Do you think God hears your prayer? Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes he doesn't? <laughs> sometimes he does. Some things, when you pray, some things happen, and then when you pray, sometimes they don't come. But, no, I pray. I believe in God. So what do I need for God to hear my prayer? Because the Bible says, if I have sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear. God said through the prophet, your sins have made a separation between you and your God so that he will not hear. In fact, the Bible says the prayer of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. You know what an abomination is? It's an old-fashioned word. It means extremely detestable. It's like a judge. If we're in our sins and we say, God, I'd like you to do something for me, it's like a a criminal who's raped three girls and murdered them, saying to the judge in the court case, hey judge, do me a favor, will you? That's not gonna cut it with the judge. He's angry at him because of his crimes. Do you believe in God's existence? Yeah, I believe in that. Okay, what do you think the Bible says about everlasting life? You say, it's just darkness, there's nothing there? The Bible says something different. I do believe there is a God though, and he's my God and he's served me every time I've talked to him. Uh, so he does what you say? I don't, I don't say he does what I say, but I say he hears me. Well, have you been born again? Uh, do you know what that is? Yeah, when, when, when you've given yourself to Jesus Christ and you're living for him, and it, and it rebirths you as his child. Yeah. Have you been born again? I believe so. So how come you don't believe his word, which says it's appointed a man who wants to die after this, the judgment. It doesn't say there's darkness. It says you've got to stand before God in judgment when you die. They say in church that God is your uh, is your own character inside your mind. He is what you make of it. You've got to change your church, man. That's just not right. I, I don't believe in the Bible, but I believe in God. Do you think you're a good person? I think I'm an amazing person. No, I mean morally, are you a good person? Yes, sir. And what about you, Trevor? Yes. Okay, I'm going to put that to the test. I'm going to give you a standard of goodness to measure yourself by. The Ten Commandments. Have you kept the Ten Commandments? No, nah, we got to get going. I'll be real quick. So, how many lies have you told in your life? Many, many, many. Ever stolen something? Yes, I have. So you're a lying thief? Yes. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> so you've admitted you're a lying thief? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> do you still think you're a good person? <laughs> I do. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Probably, yes. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? No. Tell me why not. Um, good question. I don't know. She's my mom. You yeah. sat there and she, she raised me. She probably, you know, you try not to sit there and use that. You respect her. Thank you. Okay. You wouldn't dishonor her by using her name as a substitute for a filthy word that we use to express disgust. Human excrement, beginning with S. But that's what you've done with the name of God. You've taken this holy name that godly Jews won't even speak. They won't even write it down because it's so holy. And you've taken and substituted it for that filth word, which is called blasphemy. So serious, it's punishable by death in the Old Testament. Uh, how do we get back from being a bad person to a good person? I mean, we've, I think we've all done those two things. We've all stolen. We've all lied. If you haven't, then you're not being honest to yourself. Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman and lusts for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? At a younger age, yes. You had sex before marriage? Yes, I have. So here's a summation. I'm not judging you. This is for you to judge yourself. So you've got a moral standard to go by because this is the standard God's going to judge with on Judgment Day. Okay. Rob, you've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart, who's self-righteous and saying that you're a good person when it's obvious you're not. You're like the rest of us. 
You're a sinner by nature. Our big problem is we have our own definition of good. If you look up the word good in the dictionary, there's over 40 different definitions. Number one is moral excellence. That's good in God's book. And none of us are morally excellent. We break the law. Now you're talking before about if I have done bad, how do I get to being good again? The biblical term is how may I be justified? How can I be clean in God's eyes? We talked before about God not hearing our prayers because we have wicked hearts. The Bible says we drink iniquity like water. If you're going to go and visit the queen or a king or a president, you don't just say, hey, come and talk to me. There's some etiquette involved. You may have to put on a jacket and a tie and use certain language and maybe even bow at a certain time. And when you come before God, there are certain regulations, this etiquette. Let me see how your knowledge is. Do you know what this means? The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Do you know what that means? No. You know when we break a spirit of a horse, you break a horse in, what you're doing is you're taking a wild stallion, a wild horse that's useless to man, breaking his spirit so you can harness his energy. So you can sit on his back and he'll, you can say go left, go right, he'll do what you say because his spirit's broken. That's what God wants from you a broken spirit, where you stop the rebellion and you yield your life to the God that gave you life, that gave you every blessing that you have. And the second thing is a contrite heart. Contrition is being sorry for your sins. When a judge is in a court of law and he has a criminal in front of him and he wants to show him mercy, he's going to look for contrition. Is he sorry for what he's done? If he is, the judge will give him mercy. If he's not, he'll give him wrath. He'll throw the book at him. So God is looking for two things from you, a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Are you sorry for all those sins or not? If he judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, are you going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty, sir. Heaven or hell? I guess hell. Do you know what death actually is? Death is wages from God. Have you ever heard the famous Bible verse, the wages of sin is death? Ever heard that? No. Death is payment from God to you for your sins. Like a judge, you look at a criminal, say you've murdered three young ladies. You've earned the death sentence. This is what you deserve. This is your wages. This is what's due to you. And sin is so serious in the eyes of a holy God, he's given us capital punishment. And if you died, you'd end up in hell. That horrifies me. Now tell me, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Do you know? No. Well, you do, but you don't understand it. Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the world. You know that? Yes. It's as simple as this. You and I broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. Do you remember his last words on the cross? Three very profound words? No. He said, it is finished. That's a strange thing to say when you die. It is finished. He was saying the debt has been paid. We broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. Billy, if you're in court and someone pays your fine, a judge can legally let you go. You can say, Billy, there's a stack of speeding fines here. This is deadly serious, but someone's paid them. You're out of here. Even though you're guilty, you walk because someone paid your fine. And even though you and I are guilty, and I'm as guilty as you, even though you and I are guilty because Jesus suffered and died on the cross, God can legally forgive us in an instant, all because of his death and resurrection, if we come to him with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. That is with a humble heart. God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. So Jesus then rose from the dead after he defeated death, after he died for our sins. And if you'll simply repent, turn from sin and say, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner, and put your trust in Jesus, God promises, and he cannot lie, he's without sin. It's impossible for God to lie. He promises he'll grant you the gift of everlasting life. Does this make sense, what I'm saying? Yes, it does. You're going to think seriously about this? Yes, I have been for a while. Yeah, as we get older... That appointment we have to keep gets closer and closer, and it's breathtakingly haunting. It's a frightening thing, but God says, I'll release you from the fear of death and the power of death if you'll obey the gospel. So, I mean, this is deadly serious. This is my life. This is my precious life. And then put on the Lord Jesus Christ, trust in him. Billy, I, I, I'd love to weep for you, but my heart is so hard. All I can do is have tears in my voice and say, please think about what we talked about, because you don't know when you're going to die. Will you do that for me? I will. Have a Bible at home? Yes. Pretty dusty? It's probably in the bookshelf. <laughs> it's in the bookshelf. Dig it out. It's God's love letter to you. And uh, I'm so honored and appreciative of the fact that you listen with a humble heart to me. And I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you. I don't want you to end up in hell, man. That horrifies me.
You could be snatched by death. If if there's ever a hell and that's where my destiny's led to take me, then so be it. It's not God's will. He takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He wants to extend mercy. God's will is also to forgive, too. But we got to get going, man. Well, hey, let me just share with you. We walk along, okay? I'm getting pressured over here. I would love that there's more time on this, but I can't even Five seconds. Christ died on the cross for the sin of the world. There's your forgiveness by trusting in Jesus. Died on the cross, took our punishment. So you hear what I said? God made provision for your forgiveness by Jesus suffering and dying on the cross so you could be forgiven. Hear what I'm saying? Yeah. If you repent, trust in Him, God says you'll forgive all those sins and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. But you must repent of sin and trust in Him. Don't Absolutely. trust your goodness. Okay, hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You gonna think about this? Yes, sir. And thanks for staying. You could have gone, but you stayed, and I do appreciate it. Okay. I got, I'm getting pressured over here. I would love that there's Rob more time on this, but I can't. He certainly was being pressured. He was with a group of about a dozen guys from Chicago who were standing right behind me waiting for him to finish. So when the camera was turned off, I turned around and said, Hey guys, I've got a $5 gift card for each of you to in and out California's best hamburger. Suddenly, everyone was really happy. Along with a gift card, I gave them this card to send them to our YouTube channel. The card also has the gospel on the back. You can get it from livingwaters.com. The Evidence Bible is a reservoir overflowing with everything evangelistic. I couldn't recommend it more highly. It's what you need to defend and share your faith. Franklin Graham said, in a day when Christians are too often silenced by the questions of skeptics, the Evidence Bible will help you be prepared to give an answer. Also commended by Christian leaders such as Josh McDowell, D. James Kennedy, Tim LaHaye, Norman Geisler, and Ken Ham. This study Bible comes in soft as well as hard cover. As Kirk said, it's everything you've ever wanted to know about apologetics and reaching the lost, including 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. It will arm you with practical training on evolution, atheism, the teachings of Mormons, Hindus, Muslims, and Jehovah's Witnesses, and much more. including how to effectively, lovingly, and logically share the truth of the gospel. You'll find that it's hundreds of inspiring quotes from the famous, and its practical tips on defending the faith will be a great encouragement. Go to livingwaters.com, click on Store, Books, and then the Evidence Study Bible.